I hate the fact that I tried so hard in school. Being in the top 5% of my class is one of the biggest regrets I have. Don't mind me. I'm just a little bit curious. Why do we go to school? Why? Maybe you're thinking, what is she talking about? We obviously go to school to learn. Okay, well, what are we actually learning? Because I've interviewed almost 20 people, and if there's been one non-stop consistent answer I've gotten in all of them. And the question was, do you feel like high school adequately prepared you for life in the real world? Every single one of them said no. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? It's not the teacher's fault. It's not the student's fault. It's not even the educator's fault. You know whose fault it is? It is our system. It is deliberately designed that way to make sure that you leave school knowing nothing about life in the real world. Because you know what, like John Taylor Gatto says, whoever controls society has not yet figured out how to manage a society of individualistic, educated peoples. And that angers me. That angers me that people are being deprived of a right. I was 17 years old and I was a junior in high school and I read a book that changed my life. And my brother kept having to say, Megan, read it, read it, read it. And the book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I just didn't want to read the book because I didn't like reading at the time, but I hated being required to read. That's key number one, educators, if you're watching this, like the great philosopher Plato said, the more that you push people to do something, they're gonna respond the opposite way. So finally, my brother got me to read the book. He said, Megan, I'll buy you free coffee, we'll go to Starbucks, and I, and I caved in. I said, okay, free coffee, you got me. I read the book, one chapter, and it immediately opened up my perspective. For the first time in my life, I learned about how money works. And it is so simple that you could teach it to a kindergartner. I learned that it's a mindset. People who are poor are poor because they their mindset. People who are rich are rich because their mindset. If you were to take all the money in the world and you take it away from the top 1% and you spread it out evenly among people, I guarantee you eventually it'll come back in the same hands. And I started to realize that through reading these books, and watching smart people on YouTube talk about how they became successful, that I could learn so much more studying them than sitting in a classroom, memorizing dates, names, and facts for a test that I'm just gonna forget all the information after the test anyways. And you know what? I hate the fact that I tried so hard in school. Being in the top 5% of my class is one of the biggest regrets I have. You wanna know why? Because I spent so much time, so much time, energy, getting good at, at, at what? That I'm never ever gonna use calculus again, probably. Prove me wrong, somebody, if you can prove me wrong, great. When am I gonna use anything I learned in school pretty much besides basic math and English and reading and, so we calm down. So I was learning all this stuff and I realized, well, I could learn so much more self-educating and I, wa I, I wanted more time to do that, but there was a problem. I was spending eight hours a day in school at an AP US history class that was taking up an additional two hours of study time after school every day. And then my entire Saturdays I took off work so I could have eight hours to do my A push projects and have a little bit of time to myself. And eventually I said, this is ridiculous. Where am I actually going with this information? And I remember sitting there in that class thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere with this. This is a problem, I need to get out. And thankfully, it was the start of the second semester, which means that you could drop classes. And I said, you know what? I have to take US history to graduate, but no one says that I have to take AP. And so I decided, well, I'm gonna leave AP because I'm not gonna waste my time working so hard at this when I could be using that time to learn. And I got so much backlash, so much. The system was so reluctant to let me leave that class. My own teacher didn't even want to sign the form. And at first, actually, she said, no, I'm not signing this. I said, I'm sorry. She said, no, I'm not signing this. You belong in this class. And I said, ma'am, I appreciate that, but I, you know, this is my right to leave this class. Please sign it. She did. I brought it to the counselor and they said, uh, you belong in AP. You know, you need to stay in there. This class is for you. And I said, you know what? I understand what you're saying, but please, if you could listen to my point that that I have other things going on in life that are actually gonna matter after school. And, and I wanna focus my time on that, not this useless information. So please allow me to leave AP. 
And they said, okay, you know what? We're gonna call your parents just to double check with them and we'll get back to you. And I said, okay. So I went back after school and I said, hey, did you get a chance to talk to my parents? And they said, oh, we, um, we got super busy. We'll do it tomorrow. Okay, come back the next day. Hey, did you talk to my parents? Super busy again, I promise we'll, we'll call them this afternoon. I go back after school, did you talk to my parents? And they said, yeah, we actually talked to your parents and, and we both agreed that it's, it'd be best for you to stay in AP. And I said, what? You know, I had just talked to my parents that morning and they were okay with it. I mean, they were disappointing to me, right? They said I belonged in there, but ultimately it is my decision. I am the student in there. Nobody else knows what's best for me except for me. Same with you. Your parents often are going to try to live through you. Adults always try to live through kids. And it's disgusting, honestly, because this is your life, your goal. Don't let anybody tell you what you should do. Now, granted, you should seek out smart people to learn from. Look around you and say, who has a life that I would like to live? And listen to them. Nothing against parents. In fact, I love my parents so much. This isn't necessarily targeted to them, but this is a common thing I get in general from people. And they're like, Megan, you know, I would love to go do my own thing, but my parents just are forbidding it. And honestly, forget the parents. I, I just Tell them, say, you know what? This is my life. If you don't support it, okay. Well, give them some time to think. That's another video. So I, you know, received so much backlash and they weren't listening. Nobody was listening to me. Now they convinced my parents not to sign the paper, even though my mom already, every single thing is everybody already signed this paper. The only signature I needed was from this like assistant principal lady who she wasn't signing it. And I kept fighting it and fighting it. And they came and pulled me out of class and they said, why do you want to leave? You're not going to be able to get into UT. And I remember I was like, oh, I never said I wanted to go to UT. I don't. And they just weren't listening to me. So finally I went to my principal and I asked to speak with him and they said he was busy, but he like walked right through the door. And I said, oh, can I please speak to you? And he said, sure. And he said, wait a second. I know who you are. He was like, literally, I'm not even altering a word. He said, you're funny if you think that we're going to let you drop AP because our students rank very, very highly. And when AP students leave AP, it lowers the school rank. And at that moment, I just kind of smiled and I said, okay. And I walked out because I understood that I was fighting a system that didn't want to change. And I now knew that they didn't care about the happiness of the students. Not one bit. They didn't care about me saying, hey, I really don't feel like what I'm learning here is valuable. And that's not my problem. That's yours. But I'm going, I'm not going to let that problem control my life. I'm going to take control and I'm going to self-educate the things that you are not teaching me. And they didn't get it. They didn't get it. And they care more about how their school ranks than how the actual students are doing. I mean, I knew so many people who were stressed out, depressed and everything because of assignments that were due in such short periods of time and all of the information, I mean, most of it, we will never use again. Like, isn't that sad? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that like, why are we putting up with that? So when I walked out of the principal's office that day and, and, I, and, and I said, okay, I didn't accept it because I knew a way around the system. Now there were two ways that you could leave AP. One of them, if you were failing the class or two of them, if your parents or whatever signed the paper. And so I said, okay, great. No one's gonna sign this paper, so I'll just fail the class. I'll sit in that class and I'll just do no work, do no assignments, I'll fail it, I don't care. They'll take me out. And so I was taken out and it was the best decision I ever made. In fact, a month later, I decided, you know what? I'm not even gonna spend another year in this institution. I'm getting out and I graduated. And I've learned more in this year than I have in my entire life. And, and I did receive a lot of backlash. A lot of people said what I wanted to do was unrealistic. I wanted to move out on my own and live in my favorite city and, and I wanted to go explore and meet people and, and they all said it was unrealistic, yet it all happened. I, I don't say that to brag, that's not the point. I say it to make a point, however, that what you wanna do is possible if you can become resourceful and figure it out yourself. I knew that I wanted to live in the city. I knew I wanted to live on my own. I knew I wanted to get out there and get ready in this world. And no one else was gonna help me do that except for myself. And I have Robert Kiyosaki and these authors to think and my brother and my parents who really did become supportive through all of this. A lot of people close to me said what I wanted was unrealistic. And if you do something similar, you will hear that. But there's a great quote by Henry David Thoreau. And he said, the masses of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What's called resignation is confirmed desperation. So most people are living lives of things they don't care, don't wanna do. They're working jobs that 
they don't even want to work at just to make money but life is about so much more than money we'd be foolish if we sit just to make paper life is about finding your passion and what you believe in and embodying it so every day you wake up and you experience nothing less than enlightenment